Two Kids and a Career is a production of Jill Divine Media. There's just something so beautiful about a woman carrying a baby. And and that's what bums me out about myself, especially, is that why I can't carry over that beauty after having the baby. Right. Which makes complete sense. I mean, we're human and we have, you know, changes in our body during pregnancy and postpartum, you know, I work with so many women who are postpartum that do have that same issue. I mean, I, I was there as well. I, I felt those things too. And, you know, I think a lot of it really comes down to we're constantly exposed to this body back image of postpartum. And, yep. you know, there's no more baby in the belly. Um, and now all of a sudden we're just supposed to get our bodies back and we're supposed to be just like we were before baby. And that's so incredibly harmful to women. Two Kids in a Career is brought to you by Blondin Real Estate. They're a family-owned boutique-style brokerage with over 40 years of experience serving the counties that surround St. Louis. See the properties they have to offer at BlondinRealEstate.com. That's BlondinRealEstate.com. Hi there, and welcome to Two Kids in a Career. I'm Jill Devine. As an entrepreneur, wife, and mama, the daily grind of trying to build a business while taking care of kids and trying to maintain a healthy connection with my hubby, it's a lot. With this podcast, you're going to hear candid conversations with other moms, parenting experts who can share their knowledge and insight, or you'll just hear me rambling to get it all out. There's going to be tears, there's going to be laughter, but most importantly, there will be support. Take a listen and connect with me so we can grow and learn from one another. This is Two Kids and a Career. Don't forget to stick around until the end of this epi- episode to find out who this week's super mom is with our super mom shout out. And I have a super mom joining me today. My guest is Jamie Coker. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Jill. Thanks for having me. Of course. And I love it because this goes back to our whole kind of theme of how the podcast has evolved since season four. And it's all about these happy hour conversations and coffee date conversations with women and and just this women supporting women movement and small businesses. And so you reached out. Well, you didn't even reach out. You just started being very supportive of me and my podcast and my different social media posts um, after you listened to the episode, well, she's your friend, but episode 59, the overwhelming support from other mamas and small business owners. And that featured Casey Brick. And Casey, same deal. She just kind of started following me on Instagram and it has led to this really beautiful thing where I'm having these conversations with awesome women and they're turning into friendships. And something that I have mentioned before, and, and maybe not a ton, but I have said that this podcast originally, um, I don't think that it's too much strayed from my original concept, but it was definitely going to be just moms and maybe some dads here and there just talking about mom life, talking about dad life. And then I remember having some people contact me and they had a business they want to talk about. And I was like, "Mm, I don't know about this, you know, because you just don't know. And I think, you know, I've said it before, like you just don't know somebody's intentions. And I hate to say that, but sometimes it's true. And so then I started realizing that a lot of these businesses and these women are exactly in the same situation I'm in. Like, what is the difference of me going and, and saying, hey, I want to talk to you because I have this podcast and I'd like for it to be in front of your followers and vice versa. And the other thing is these small businesses are, are truly small businesses that need all the help they can get. And so I started shifting my, my way of like, okay, here's the way that we're going to have these conversations. It's going to be about businesses. If I can help support local, I will. And it's also going to be about mom life and the struggles and all that kind of stuff. So my long little intro there (laughs) about you and how we have connected. I mean, you do have a business. We're obviously going to talk about it, but we're also going to talk about Jamie as the woman, as the wife, as the mom. And I just want to thank you for the support 
you've given me. I don't think some people realize like just liking a post or something like that. It, it helps out a lot. So much, yes. So let's get to it. Um, I know that part of your business has come from a situation in your life. So let's kind of back up a little bit and and just talk about you and your background. Yeah. So my background is actually I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I specialize in pelvic health. So anything basically pregnant, postpartum, um, anything to do with the female body is what I specialize in. Um, and I specifically now specialize in pregnancy and postpartum fitness. So it didn't start off that way. Um, and it kind of goes back a little bit. Um, my brand is called Moms Made Strong. And that's just, it's a fitness company designed for all phases of motherhood. So we do everything from fitness, to, from pregnancy, all the way through postpartum. And it really kind of started the idea back in like 10 years ago when I was pregnant with my first daughter and couldn't find strength training classes for women. It was all prenatal yoga, which there's absolutely nothing with prenatal yoga. But at the time, I really wasn't interested in yoga. Um, and I wanted to fill that void for me eventually um, with that postpartum or that pregnancy strengthening and then also offer something for postpartum women so they can exercise safely and confidently during and after pregnancy. So it was kind of a professional yet personal interest of mine and seeing a void in the market and taking far too long to get there <laughs> because <laughs> yes, my oldest is almost nine and mom's made strong came to be just about two years ago. Um, ah, okay. yeah, so it's a, it's a brand new, brand new baby, I guess still, um, one of my very many babies and, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just been amazing. We have, um, Jill, you and I, we love empowering women and yep. that's what mom's made strong is about. It's about empowering women, connecting women, making them feel amazing and strong because that's what moms and moms to be deserve to feel. Well, as soon as you started talking about what it was that you were trying to do in the void, I, yes, I wish that I had, well, I guess I wish you had made your business a little while ago. I do too, Jill. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Mom life gets in the way. And yep. Raising time there's a reason it. why. There's. A, I always yeah. say there's a reason why. It's yeah. fine. It's not about me, but mm -hmm. that would, it's true. Like even... I did, I, I was doing a lot of yoga with my first daughter and, but even those classes were not specifically designed for a pregnant woman. However, the teacher was great to be able to help with that and give me right. different guidelines throughout the time. But in the same sense, I thought about, okay, well, what if you weren't, aren't showing and you haven't said anything? I mean, I guess you would tell somebody. But anyway, I never really thought of doing anything else that because I remember I, I I don't know. I don't know if I think it was my second saying, oh, well, I, I'd like to do some more cardio. And they're like, don't add anything that you haven't already been doing. Mm -hmm. And I did feel a little restricted on moving my body and what I could do. And so, yeah, this is just mm -hmm. on that side of keeping active would have been just an amazing thing. And so I'm really hoping women who are listening, if you know somebody that's pregnant, you're pregnant, keep listening. But something else that you said that I hands down know, because I've talked to other people about this, the recovery Mm -hmm. and your, the way your body is after you have babies. So I had two C-sections and I had talked to someone not that long ago about maybe some of the things that are happening with my belly or even me accepting the way my body looks. Um, I'm not because I haven't really had that focus, if that makes sense. Like, totally. No, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. I, I wish I had something like that. And so I am encouraging anyone just, you got to listen, you got to, <laughs> Jamie, we're going to get them into you because it's so important. Like yes. just having girls too, just, I just don't want them to have some of those thoughts that I have. Right. And that's what, honestly, after my um, second daughter was born, Reese, um, that's what I turned to focus on was really, I have two girls now. 
I, I grew up body shaming, not feeling like enough, you know, basically um, using exercise as a punishment. Yes. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I, you know, me being in the health and fitness industry, I knew better, but it doesn't make me not human, you know, and feel those human things we all feel as moms. And I was like, I can't do this to them. And so, you know, for me, it was a lot of um, digging deep and finding the right things to help me feel amazing in my own body after baby, because it's a very vulnerable time. And not many women come out of pregnancy feeling very confident. And so, you know, that's where personally I had to do a lot of growing, but also that translates into what I tell my clients and how I hopefully um, educate women and help women navigate postpartum and even pregnancy. I have a lot of clients that are pregnant who are having issues um, understanding their pregnant bodies and that there needs to be uh, modifications and doing things differently. So um, it's definitely through pregnancy and postpartum, but I just hope to empower women to, you know, safely regain strength and fitness and love it. You should love exercise. You should not hate it. It shouldn't be a punishment for women. And, um, you know, I hope that I can provide some of that excitement about exercise and fitness to people. So yeah, body shaming, I still do it to myself and I am a work in progress. Uh, I'll back up to something you said that this definitely didn't apply to me, but I, uh, I remember seeing one of my cousins, she was definitely very fit. And she, when she was pregnant, she admitted that she had a hard time with her body growing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm thinking, man, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it did, it made me step back for a second and think, oh, okay, I could see kind of where she's coming from. But it was also hard because on the other end, for me, I felt more confident in myself when I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because my belly, there was a reason why my belly was bigger, right. you know, like, mm. yeah, I, I, I often can say that with both pregnancies, I felt more comfortable in my skin mm -hmm. because I was pregnant. Yeah. And that's great. I was not that way, Jill. <laughs> I I was on the opposite end and I love hearing that women I love it when women feel that way. And you know, I think that's where pregnancy and even postpartum are extremely personal based on, you know, how your body feels and and how you feel um deep down inside. And um you know, that's one of the things when I'm working with a client, you know, they're there to work with me um for a multitude of reasons, but I always ask them why is this really important to you? Or why, why, you know, if they say something about changing or, you know, their body, why do you feel that way? Because, you know, it's getting deep into those whys, um, you know, even when it just comes to like, why do you work out and exercise on a regular basis? You know, simple stuff, you know, those questions, but digging deeper can really get, um, you know, can be extremely helpful when working with women. But you know, it's also those conversations that we should be able to celebrate pregnancy and postpartum and feel great about ourselves during pregnancy and after baby. And um, those conversations are really, really important ones to have with with those that you love and trust. With the pregnancy, I just whenever I see a pregnant woman, I just can't help but smile. Mm -hmm. And there is something so beautiful about it. And um, I've use this example, well, not this exact example, but I don't know what's wrong with me, but Family Feud. Yeah, <laughs> um, I had talked about it on the launch of season five with Messy Mommies. I use an example, but we watch Family Feud uh, at the dinner table. And um, I was actually taken back because in the money round or bonus round. And I said this with them too, like as much as I watch it, I should know exactly what it's called. And I still don't know, but the end round. And it was like, they asked the, the survey um, on a scale of one to 10, how sexy do you find a pregnant woman? And I blurted out 10, you know? So mm -hmm. the number one answer was one. And so then I started, I was like, what is wrong with people? And then I thought, okay, well, 
I mean, maybe I understand why somebody doesn't think a pregnant woman is sexy as far as like, you know, I I mean, I get it, but I don't like there's just something so beautiful about a woman carrying a baby. And and that's what bums me out about myself, especially is that why I can't carry over that beauty after having the baby. Right, right. Which makes complete sense. I mean, we're human and we have, you know, changes in our body during pregnancy and postpartum. You know, I work with so many women who are postpartum that do have that same issue. I mean, I, I was there as well. I, I felt those things too. And, you know, I think a lot of it really comes down to we're constantly exposed to this body back image of postpartum and, yep. you know, there's no more baby in the belly. Um, and now all of a sudden we're just supposed to get our bodies back and we're supposed to be just like we were before baby. And that's so incredibly harmful to women to get that message. You know, I, I think we get messages all the time about this, but you know, it comes really big from the diet, um, diet industry and the fitness industry in the past where they're just expecting women to bounce back because now there's no baby, you know, so your Mm. body's supposed to just pick itself back up and pick right up where it started. And that's, that's just hard, so hard for women. Um, and a lot of what I try to explain to women is it takes time to heal your body after pregnancy and it's okay to not feel super confident right after baby, but you don't have to stay there. You know, there's things you can do, um, and ways that you can change that. So you do feel sexy and confident in your now mom body and postpartum body. I was thinking too, something that we're probably all guilty of, Um, just bringing up different things that I know I experienced. So after my first, I lost a lot of the the baby weight. Like I probably was thinner. uh, Well, I was thinner before I got pregnant. And I remember that feeling of people being like, oh my gosh, you look so great. I can't believe you just had a baby. Mm -hmm. And I felt good. Like I, I don't know what was in my head that would happen, but I was like, yes, I feel good. And, and then I thought that same thing would happen with my second and it didn't, it was definitely, um, I mean, yeah, I, Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, I know that I should be moving my body more. And I mean, we I would say with our food choices, you know, we're pretty, uh, I I would say half and half. Like I'd even go 70, 30, 70 percent on the, the good choices and then 30 on the bad. But I know that exercise is part of it. So some of it is is me. But also at the same time. I don't think I've allowed myself to realize that this is baby number two and some things are not going to change and I have to be okay with that. And that's pretty common after multiple pregnancies is to start seeing your body um, heal a little slower, you know, or, or things don't change like they did the first time. Um, And that's just, that's, fairly common because our body's been pregnant now twice or even more times. So, um, tissues have been stretched and, and things have been shifted and, you know, feet are bigger and (laughs) things like that. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, it, I, I think there's definitely, um, postpartum kind of a journey when women, you know, depending on first pregnancies, second pregnancies or more, um, when and where that time for, fitness or healthy eating or self-care or just better sleep (laughs) can come Mm -hmm. in. And yeah, with two kids, there's a lot less time for any and all of that. So um, I I preach that if you're doing something to take care of yourself um, mentally, physically, nutritionally, you know, then, then that's obviously better than doing nothing. There's just a point where we can do some things and then nothing and then all of the things, you know? (laughs) Right. So something that I was just thinking about when you were talking is my word of the year is self-care. So I know that I have to do better at taking care of myself. And um, I I don't know, you just mentioned the different things that you should do for self-care, but like specifically, do you have something that you could tell me that I would 
would think of working on or, you know, maybe somebody's listening and they're feeling in the same situation. Like I somebody asked me, well, you said self-care is your word for 2021, but what does that mean? And I said, I honestly don't know. I just know that I have to focus on myself. But as far as the what, Mm -hmm. that's where I'm still like, "Eh, I'm not sure. Yeah. And I would say to you and women who are in that situation to just start asking yourself on a day-to-day basis, what do I need today? You know, don't, don't put so much pressure to have, you know, I'm going to work out five times a week and that's going to be my self-care or I'm going to go for a walk and I'm going to hit 10,000 steps every single day. And if you're good at achieving those types of goals, then definitely set those goals for yourself. But I find it more powerful and I do this myself. What do I need today? Because today I might need a cup of tea and a book. Tomorrow I might need a really heavy, intense workout with heavy weights. The next day, I just might need to go to bed a little bit earlier. So I think self-care can look like a lot of different things. And I think it really depends on kind of what you feel like you need today or even in this moment. What do I need right now? What do I need later tonight? You know, so ask yourself that um, and fill in the blank because everybody's self-care looks completely different. I love that. I didn't even think about that. And we're always talking about how we want to be more present and we want to be in the moment. So. I love that. Uh, okay. Writing that down so that I can have it there. Like you should see everywhere that surrounds me. I have all these different notes and <laughs> papers. I love it. Sounds like me. <laughs> like, okay. Remind yourself to do this. Remind yourself to do this. Right, right. You know, what's so funny too, is that, um, something that I also think should happen like with the creation that you have put together in your job is like, we go to our checkups with our doctors to make sure we're doing okay. It's almost like we, there should be this mandatory program for postpartum because not only just like the bodies, but I'm, you're also kind of like a therapist. I mean, you're working with these emotions and postpartum is for real. The struggle is there. And so it's just like, why are we not you know, coming up with some sort of mandatory program. I guess you can't call it mandatory, but more, you know what I mean? Right. Well, and actually that, you know, the American Academy um, Academy of Gynecology and Obstetrics has actually recommended that women get sent to physical therapy at six weeks postpartum mm. for a checkup. You know, it's it's not that every single doctor is going to tell every single woman at six weeks to go see a physical therapist, but, you know, it's starting to become more recommended so that women can take care of their bodies postpartum. And I, I do, I, I mean, I think postpartum is hard in general. You're trying to navigate motherhood. What's going on with your body? You know, how are you feeding the baby? Are you sleeping? Like there's so much that goes into it. And I am so pro mental health for postpartum Mm -hmm. as well. Um, and that's where, you know, a lot of times our postpartum checks are focused on, are you healing well? And how are you doing mentally. And that's extremely, extremely important. But a lot of the physical stuff just sometimes gets pushed to the side, Um, especially if a woman's not complaining of, you know, significant issues um, in her body to the doctor um, or healthcare provider. It just does kind of get pushed aside. Um, So I tell women, you know, even if you don't have anything going on in your body that you're concerned about, still ask your doctor for a referral to physical therapy. Um, after that six week check, because you're just going to do yourself a complete service to take care of your mind and body postpartum. Well, I I would say the two go hand in hand. If you're working Mm -hmm. on the physical side, it's probably going to help with the mental side. And, and again, if you're not prepared, like I was not prepared for a a, C-section, an emergency Mm -hmm. C-section, which now the things that I thought that I was going to do with recovering, definitely like, wait, wait, you don't want me to go up and down steps for six weeks? What are you talking about? (laughs) You know, you don't know those things. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's super, super important. Okay. I want to dive into something that is a little bit more difficult probably than talking about the way that you can help women. But I know that uh, in just our communication before this, I know that you have, is it three angel babies? Or? Yes, I have three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Three so you 
talk about how this the, these angel babies really has helped you develop your business and may I first stop and go back because there is um you, you see some women who talk about their rainbow babies and then angel babies now rainbow babies that references a, a baby that is it's a miscarriage or a, a stillborn or a, a, the your very first one correct the rainbow baby is actually the the baby that you hold in your arms that comes after the loss of a baby so okay yeah so when they call rainbow babies it's a baby that was born following a miscarriage oh okay mm -hmm. and so then how do you distinguish between angel babies so I call mine angel babies because um, they are ones that I held only for a very short period of time in my body and went straight to heaven. So okay. I call mine angel babies um, because I didn't. I, I did get a rainbow baby. Um, I unfortunately lost her around the twenty week mark of our pregnancy, um, and so she went to heaven. So um, yeah, I think it just kind of depends on the, on the person and how they want to, how they want to call, um, all the children that they have. Um, I just call mine angels cause I, I feel like they're watching over me right now. Yeah. Well, and you're not the only one. That's why I wanted to, to ask for a little bit more clarification. Okay. Can you talk to me about these three angel babies? Yeah. Um, so I was, uh, pregnant in 2018 with, twins. Um, and I went into 2019 at carrying them and unfortunately went in for a routine follow-up and got the very awful words, um, sorry, I can't find a heartbeat, um, and lost the twins um, somewhere around, like it was very early loss, um, lost them about like nine weeks um, okay. into the pregnancy. Okay. So, and, but you had your other two daughters first. Yes. Okay. Yes. So okay. My daughters are born in, Elon was born in 2012. Reese was born in 2014. Okay. Um, and then we took a little hiatus <laughs> from trying for more children. But yeah, I, I went in very early on that twin. Uh, so my twins who are two of my three angels, you know, we found out it was a very uh, high risk situation um, just based on the pregnancy itself you know, struggled obviously with that, you know, any losses extreme, can be extremely traumatic for a woman. Um, and at that time I hadn't necessarily started my business yet with Moms Made Strong, but I had been working in the clinic, treating women and um, knew that this was something that I still wanted to do. I just didn't have the time to do it. And after I lost the twins, I really went through a phase of what do I want and what is most important to me in what is working in my life and what isn't. And so I went through a whole kind of, you know, digging deep and exploring kind of my needs and my wants. And, you know, the, those two, you know, my first two angels just kind of led me to realize that I needed to step away from clinical care and I needed to take a break to then determine which direction I wanted to go forward. And so um, I lost the twins in January of 19 and stepped away from clinical care that May and took the summer to just be with my girls and figure things out. And, you know, with a lot of discussion and collaboration and things, Moms Made Strong came to be then in August of, um, of 19. And, um, you know, at that time, I just, I felt really strongly that this was the direction that I was supposed to go. And then I got pregnant again uh, in September of 19 and um, just one baby this time. And truthfully, Jill, it was like, this is perfect is what I thought. You know, I just started this business all around pregnancy and postpartum fitness and caring for women and keeping them active. I'm going to be this poster child of this brand and show them how to be the person, you know, exercising safely during pregnancy and and do all these things. And so when I got pregnant, it was just this moment of like, oh, like, this is how it's, this is just right. This is perfect. And then unfortunately, when I went in for my 20 week scan, um, we found out again that my daughter um, did not have a heartbeat at that time. And January, 2020 was hard, was very hard. Um, 
you know, it's, it's losing, losing any pregnancy is very difficult, but having back to back losses and losing Evelyn at 20 weeks when we knew that she was a girl, I had started to feel her moving. That was hard. I mean, it, it sucked if I'm just very honest, but you know, I, I'm here to talk about it. And, um, yeah, Evelyn was our rainbow. She was our rainbow. And, um, we, um, we do not have any more children and I, we never tried again, um, for lots of reasons, but it was our personal decision not to try for any more children. So when people talk about those rainbow babies, I say, you know, some rainbows end up here on earth and some end up in heaven. And our rainbow just happened to end up in heaven. Then you go into a pandemic. Right. (laughs) Right. And, you know, you are still recovering and and postpartum. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. How was that? Well, (laughs) (laughs) um, like I said earlier, I'm very pro mental health. And I have a wonderful counselor who I see and wonderful family and friends that supported me and my family through that. But um, yeah, that that uh, that definitely took us all for a turn. And grieving in general, is hard. And then you put a pandemic and not being able to see and be with those you love and need for support. Um, the business had to pivot the, my husband's job had to pivot. I mean, we were just pivoting all over the place and still grieving at the time. And truthfully, Jill, like I've never been through something so hard. And I think, I think, you know, we all have different, this year's just been hard for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you put grief on top of it and it's just a whole new level of hard. Um, but I, I do, I have a, I have a wonderful support system. My clients have been amazing. My friends, my family, um, you know, it, it has definitely taken a village. Yeah. I think I've, I mean, I have said it before that, that (laughs) some of my darkest days took place during the pandemic and sometimes, you know, it, it would be over the stupidest things and, you know, it, it makes you just stop and go, okay, there's people like you who were grieving and there were other things that were just so much more than the things that were going on inside my head. And I'm not going to say that I'm not allowed to have those thoughts, but sometimes it does take certain things to put put it into perspective. And, uh, you know, just being able to be there in the moment and be thankful for my kids and Mm -hmm. my husband and and my life, you know, it's just, yeah, it, it is taken for granted. And it, it requires a lot of gratitude and a lot of self-compassion. And, you know, my therapist has always pointed out to me too, that, you know, we're all grieving loss as, you know, with the pandemic And so, you know, we're all grieving in different ways and, um, you know, it definitely, it makes you feel less alone, um, but it doesn't make it any easier. That's for sure. Yeah. I think just one piece of advice is ask for help and turn to that village. Like you were saying, you just need to, to, yeah, ask for help. Um, it's, it's difficult. Do you know the percentages or even the documentation of women that have healthy babies and then they are unable to have more babies? Um, Because you you often hear the reverse. Mm -hmm. You hear that a lot of times there's multiple miscarriages and then Um, you're able to get pregnant. And I feel like you don't hear as many stories as like yours. Um, And so I was just wondering if you knew a little bit more about that. Yeah. You know, I don't know this. I don't know the statistics um, off the top of my head, but um, you know, I am what they call advanced maternal age. (laughs) Sister, (laughs) you know that we're in that same boat. Uh, So they they used to call it geriatric pregnancy and they got rid of that. So I was like, thank goodness. But But I I do know that if you are of advanced maternal age, which means that you are 
getting pregnant beyond the age of 35, that your chances of um, miscarriage, um, if you've had children and then, you know, there's um, difficulty getting pregnant or with multiple miscarriages, they tend to, um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that there is something that can happen called secondary infertility. And for a little while between our two pregnancies that we had, I was struggling um, to get my body back, you know, in sync and we were struggling to get pregnant and they thought it was more of a secondary infertility. And there are, um, we have such amazing specialists here um, locally that can be helpful in that, but it does get trickier when you become that advanced maternal age, you know, and ultimately for us, it was, um, you know, I, I never sought out the answers for myself as to why we ended up with the miscarriages that we did because we felt um, that our family just was completed in the way it was completed. Um, So we never sought out any more testing, but everybody's got a personal choice as to when they decide to be finished with their families. And yeah, there's just, there's, it gets harder as you get older, there's more testing, there's more um, specialists. Um, But yeah, if you can get yourself to a great network of healthcare providers that can help you um, if you're experiencing multiple miscarriages or um, infertility, Um, man, there's just some amazing doctors out there that can be helpful with that. So Moms Made Strong, if someone is listening and they want to get in contact, how do they do so? Yeah, so um, they can find me on Instagram at Moms Made Strong. Uh, I don't have a Facebook page, but I do have a Facebook group if you like Facebook groups. And this is free and open to any moms or moms-to-be. It's called Moms Made Strong. So it's facebook.com slash groups slash Moms Made Strong. Um, yeah, those are probably the best two ways to get in touch with me. And I will have all of this linked up on the show notes at jilldevine.com. So what are your parting words, Jamie? I feel like you are a, a ray of sunshine for Aww. women. And <laughs> I know that, you know, I, I do, I have a lot of work to do on myself, but knowing that there are people out there that are wanting to give that advice and that help and, you know, just push through it all. It's awesome. So I just wanted to see what your final thoughts are, especially for someone listening that's just kind of not sure what to do, where to go, how to handle it. Yeah. Well, you know, definitely give yourself grace, mama, because it is, it is not easy to do all the things as moms and, You know, I think when a woman is not really sure or has a hard time, reach out, ask for some help. There are, you know, people like myself um, all over the place, and we're here to help you and, um, you know, make health and fitness and pelvic health and core fitness just so much easier on you. So let us help you do the work um, so you don't have to think so hard about it. Yes. Give me one less thing to think about. I am in, Jamie. Amen. Yes, yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Well, thank you again. And please keep us posted on the development of Moms Made Strong and anything that you feel like the mamas need to, to know. Like, I welcome that and I am open to that. So please, you know, we love what you're doing for this community. We're just so happy. I'm happy that this is now available and people are starting to learn about it and don't have to just wish for it anymore. Totally. You said it right. I love it. Before I get to the super mom shout out, I want to highlight one of the sponsors of the podcast, Blonde in Real Estate. And I have to say this to you. I know I don't know a lot of the realtor talk, but I do know that the market is crazy right now with buying and selling. And if you don't have an experienced real estate agency to help you, you could be taken advantage of. Don't let that happen. Let the wonderful staff at Blonde and Real Estate be your guide, be your sounding board, and be there every step of the way with you. BlondinRealEstate.com, BlondinRealEstate.com. If you're new to the podcast, it's at this point in the episode where I do the Supermom shout out. And I created this because there are so many times where, as a mom, it could just feel like a very thankless job and you don't feel like you're recognized and you don't feel like you're supported. And I wanted to change that. So I have put it out there. Give me the nominations of that super mom in your life. And 
last week's episode, I talked about a nomination that was a little bit different. It came through Instagram from Nan, and it was going to a woman by the name of Steph. And in the Instagram nomination, Nan had also tagged Steph's daughter, Addie. So then Addie got in on the nomination. Well, all of this also transpired to Nan nominating Addie. So in that initial nomination, Nan had said that Addie, Steph's daughter, should also get a shout out. She said, Addie is an amazing mama too. She has two kiddos and is one of the most creative people I know. She is so talented and you should see the work that she has done on rehabbing her home. Addie, I see you and I support you. If you have a super mom nomination, all you have to do is email me hello at jilldevine.com or on my Instagram at jilldevine or Facebook or Twitter, whatever is easiest for you. Just get me that nomination and I'll give that super mom a shout out. And thank you for listening to Two Kids in a Career. If you haven't done so already, would you mind subscribing? to the podcast, that means you will never miss an episode because you will be notified when a new episode launches. And if the podcast platform where you're listening to this episode allows you to rate and review, I would love if you could do that for me as well. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting Two Kids and a Career. 